we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, we've come to receive the promise that you help at this time. We've come to receive help. We've come to fix our destiny. In this world, they say you can't fix your fate, but we've come to fix it. Father, we confess that you are almighty. May our desires be fulfilled. May we give thanks and sing praises. May our children do more well. May we have a family that shines light. And may we be patriots to our country and our people. And for world peace, may we only live as ambassadors of Christ. We believe that our desires will be fulfilled today. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So at this time, Almighty God has to become my Father in order to receive help. So the Lord is my Father. So later, if, if it's time, he'll give us that sermon. But what is it that you hate the most? Because you don't give thanks for what you hate the most, that's why you can't succeed. Jesus, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, says to have the heart of Jesus Christ. But Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, we say that. But how is it that you can have the heart of Jesus Christ? So they don't say that. You know, they don't teach you according to the word. That's why they're all liars and embezzlers. They're shameless, false prophets. They say, have the heart of Jesus Christ. Anyone says that. But how can you have that heart? That's what people can't say. And so it's like saying, have food when there is no food. So what you hate the most are the dishes. And then after that is the laundry. You eat, it's after what you've eaten, what your family has eaten, and yet you hate to do the dishes. And that's why if you go to a restaurant, even though it's expensive, people want to still go there because they don't want to do the dishes. I don't know what it's like these days. About 10, 15 years ago when I, when I went around Europe, even when I went to Germany, you know, in a normal family, in one month they may go out side to eat. That's a well-off family, just once a month. But America, you know, they eat two, three meals outside, even a poor family. And I asked why. Well, they don't say it's because they don't want to do the dishes, but they say, oh, because it's comfortable. In other words, they don't want to do the dishes. So what people hate the most, it seems like it's the dishes, but what they hate even more, we don't we don't know it, and this is this is why we don't succeed. It's to hear rebuke. This is what we hate the most. So the difference between someone who succeeds and fails, someone who likes to hear rebuke succeeds. But if you hate to hear rebuke, instead of succeeding, you'll receive scary disasters. So yesterday, because I didn't have time, you know, I said, I didn't even say, oh, it's, they just ate the raw, the raw fish by themselves. I just said, oh, they ate all the raw fish. So if people say, oh, you did it, just you just did it, you went by yourselves. You know, m most people say that. But behind it, are you saying that you liked it or you hated it? So already you've hated, you've committed the sin of murder. And yet you don't, you don't repent of the sin of murder. 1 John chapter 3 verse 15. So if you if you don't like someone or you hate someone, that's murder. That's already the second thing that comes from your heart and yet you don't repent of this. So after realizing this, now have a look back. Even amongst your siblings. In the world, the demons who are of evil, 
of darkness. They say, let's love as brothers. Do you know how many brothers are enemies? And that's why God doesn't say, love as brothers. He says, love as your own body. Who is an enemy with their own body? Even though you do bad things, you understand your own self, you forgive your own self. And that's why God's word and demon religions, what the world says, you know, they say, oh, you have to love as your brothers. But brothers are mostly enemies. Those who don't do four-step repentance, the, the brothers are enemies. So, But they don't know. They hate each other, and yet they don't know. And that's why God doesn't say, love as brothers. He says, love as your own body. Love as your own self. If you don't, then you're not keeping the commandment. Mark chapter 12, verse 31. So you have to love as your own self. So we have to love our neighbor as our own self. When can we have this heart? When we can't even do it for our own spouse. So he doesn't say spouses are two. They may look like two bodies, but they're one. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 and 5. So if you have a bad spouse relationship, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, then God, he won't accept that prayer. So you may pray, but he's not hearing your prayer because you have a bad spouse relationship. That's why you don't do well. You end up becoming a fake churchgoer. And yet no one teaches you this. Why is it that you have such a bad spouse relationship? Because you hate to hear rebuke. And so you end up saying, oh, they nag so much. That's what they're saying about their spouse. Oh, they nag so much. The reason why you can't succeed is because you can't do what you hate the most. And what is it that you hate the most? Rebuke. Let's find Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. So even now, if you want to succeed, if someone you know, gets you in trouble or your parents-in-law or whoever it is that scolds you, you know, at work. If you receive that as sweet as honey, then you'll succeed. So you have to receive it like that because all of God's word is rebuke. So Psalms 119 verse 103, if you want to eat God's word as sweet as honey, then rebuke has to be sweet like that. Why do you pay money to go to school? Because they subtly uh, rebuke you as, as correction. You talk about studying. You know, studying is so easy. If you just know how, you can just be playing around and you'll come first. There's not even much to do. You know, those doctorates that you respect so much, you go and ask them what they've done. There's, they've hardly done anything. You know, at lecture time, it must be such a headache for them. They don't know much, and yet they have to teach something. So what does God say? Worldly things, no matter how good it is, it's elementary. You go to a kindergarten, you know, if you teach them something, You know, they think it's a headache learning the times tables. But for us, it's so, it's so um, childish. And that's why God says it's elementary. No matter how high the world's, the world's learning, it's, it's elementary. There's nothing to learn. And, you know, tomorrow it changes anyway, becomes a lie. Galatians chapter 4, verse 9. So we've come here to succeed. In the world, there's no way to fix your destiny or to change your fate, but we've come to do that. Because he's almighty, Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, it will be fixed. So what is it we have to do to have it fixed? You know, We've come here many times to fix our destiny. We've come to hear the word and pray. But in the world, there's all of these these embezzlers. They say, do this and, and you'll be fixed. It, you, you won't be fixed. We become dirty because of the sins of our heart. If, and so you become a dirty person. But to not even know you have the sins of the heart. So they're all beasts that are perishing. And that's why Psalm chapter 49 verse 20. Truly, you're a beast that is perishing. It's not just a, a perishing man. You're a perishing beast. Why did God say that? 
because you don't even know that you've become dirty. You've come here to do well, but to do well. Someone who hears rebuke, that's the person you have to become. But everyone hates to hear rebuke. So if you want to know that person, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8, it's after rebuking them that you'll know. So what does it say here? What we hate the most, God says, that's what's best for you. You know, why do we eat um, medicine, even though it's bitter? Because it, it, it heals our disease. You know, words that are rough to the ears, that, that's what saves you. Let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. Amen. So whatever you do, if, if you go to work, our young people, and I, I even say to my family members, after I rebuke them, if they start to avoid me and I see family members like that, that person will be cursed. They will receive disasters and curses. They won't do well. But here it says, I'll read it, but all things when they expose by the light, whether you hear rebuke from demons or whether it's some boss, some senior, some junior, you know, hearing this rebuke, whoever it is, in whatever way they say it, it's for me to become light. So all of the world is for whom? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. It's all for my sake. But those people who don't do well, you know, those people who say, I've lived for, for decades and yet I, I don't do well. It's because they don't want to hear what they hate the most, which is rebuke. They're like, you know what? I'd rather live by myself, you know, just poor. I'm not going to hear rebuke. So they don't do well and their children don't do well because the parents hate to hear rebuke and they don't repent after hearing rebuke you know if you even if you receive some land from the from the from your ancestors you know nothing's going to seed but if the parents have repented as much as they repent the children do well you look at farming for 3 4 years if you don't use it it just, it's, the land becomes a mess for three or four years. If the rain doesn't come for three or four years, it becomes a desert. But even in a desert, if it rains for three or four years, it becomes fertile ground. And if you break up that ground for three or four years, then it becomes fertile ground. It's the same with our hearts. According to how much you repent, you change. So, and that's why the education system is based on three, four years, like Jesus and his disciples, you know, preaching the Gospels. It's based on, on that. So all education is according to the word. You know, in a place like America, you know, they times three by four. And so it's after 12 years that they graduate. So our country, we talk about elementary school and then middle school and then high school. But America... You know, because education is compulsory, they just they just tie it all together. So it's 12, 12 years, and they talk about year 12. I'd never heard of that. But, you know, the country teaches you for free for 12 years, and then afterwards, you know, you can do what you want. You pay to go to university or do what you want. But rebuke, who does it make shine? So does it mean only some rebukes make you shine, but others don't? No, it's all rebuke. Let's read it again. But all things become visible when they're exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. Amen. So no matter what someone says, whether it be at work, you know, if you're cursed by someone in your business, whatever it is, who does it make shine? So but are you happy about it? You know, if you're cursed at dawn, you see if you're happy about that. But God's word rebukes us. How much does he love us? Let's find Revelations chapter 3, verse 19. And that's why it says, that's why I love you. It's because I love you that I discipline you. And, you know, why? Why do you get 
Why do you get um, disciplined? It's because you've done something wrong. You know, if you get rebuke, you say, okay, fine, I've done something wrong. And then you just cast it aside. No, you have to make, you, you have to make sure you shine. Joseph, after going to prison, that's when he shone. But you don't do it so that you shine. So those people who, who, who succeed the most, you know, Joseph, how did he become overseer of the household? How much would he ever receive rebuke? You know, he never had been a slave before. He was, he only received his parents' love. So then, because he wasn't used to the work, he would have received so much rebuke. You know, what we have to learn from the Japanese, you know, whoever it is, you have to learn from them. We have to learn from America. We have to learn from Iraq. Some people curse, you know, one side. Later, they'll receive disasters. Some people praise one side. They'll receive disasters. It's for both sides, for me to repent and to, for me to shine. So everything is thanksgiving. But if you don't know how to see this properly, you end up making your own life dark. Where it's dark, then demons stick, one John. And so you ruin your life and you make your children not do well. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. So all rebuke makes who shine. So someone who receives a lot of rebuke, that's good. But fake churches, they don't have rebuke. They only say words that are pleasing to the ear, the, the false prophet. They only say pleasing words to Peter chapter 2 verse 1, Luke chapter 6 verse 26. So words that are pleasing to the ear without rebuke, they, they ruin your soul. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. So God says to those whom he loves, according to their sins, he will discipline them and rebuke them. So whether it's your ancestors' sins or your sins, if something happens, so when you're taught to repent, yes, you'll repent of the sins of your heart and the sins of your flesh and the sins of hating to keep God in your heart. But other than those things, if something else happens and it comes through some other person, you say, oh, this is so unfortunate. And you don't think about repenting. You just say, oh, it's bad luck. And you just spit on them. Or you may sprinkle salt. You know, you shouldn't be sprinkling salt outside. It's me that has to change. It's me that has to become salt. You know, animals, they have to eat something salty. And so if you have salt there, they'll lick it. So Chong Zong, as he was riding a cow, the cow stopped and began to lick the salt. And so he ended up sleeping um, at that house that... And so some places, they sprinkle salt in front of their place. What, that's a demon house? You know? So to, to those whom he loves, he, re, he rebukes and disciplines. So what is it that we have to do? We want to shine. We like to shine. And we should shine. That's how you become someone who's going to heaven. Someone who's dirty, if you become clean, you shine and you become a man. We talked yesterday about a dirty person. If you let the sins of your heart remain, you're dirty. So those people who don't even repent of the sins of their heart, and they say, oh, I'm so respect-worthy, praise-worthy, you know, I don't have any shame in front of others. They're so shameless. It's because they have betrayed the sin of Christ. Uh, the, it's a sin of betraying Christ. So whatever rebuke makes me shine. But I hate to hear rebuke the most. So what does God say? Let's read Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Amen. So who does God rebuke? Those who hates? So if you hate to hear God's word, that's someone who hates to receive God's love. Someone who loves to hear God's word is someone who succeeds. So to those whom he loves, he wants to be with them. That's why he rebukes and disciplines them. You say, oh, if the pastor or the pastor's wife rebukes me, I'll listen to that. That's great, but all rebuke makes me shine. So if you shine, then your children shine. So 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 that light is God. So it's God being with you. So it's to those whom he loves that he rebukes and disciplines. When you're disciplined, you're beaten. 
So if you go somewhere and you receive some unimaginable difficulty, that's for you to shine. So don't argue back and cause problems. What is it that I have to do? We have to zealously repent. There's nothing to do but repent. Acts chapter 20 verse 21. What is it that we have to do toward God? Nothing but repent. But these men, these lying religions that lies have made, you can't find repentance. But Acts chapter 20 verse 21, God says the only thing you do toward God is to repent. There's no nothing else that you have to do because if you're clean, God will be with you. So those people who say they're not doing well, it's because you still have to receive rebuke and discipline. People are like, why is my... My destiny is so unfortunate. Why do I receive difficulties my whole life? You've only received difficulties, but you've never repented of them. So from now, let's repent. Whatever difficulties, if you have disease, if if you have, you know, if you're receiving some beatings, whatever difficulties, let's just repent. Then I will shine and my children will shine. When I shine, my children, without suffering, they'll shine. This is the blessing we have to receive. Is this amen? But the smallest thing, we get upset. We don't think of con- just continuing to repent. But so what is it that I've become upset about? Why is it that I'm, um, you know, complaining about my bad life? Why is it your children don't listen? Because you've betrayed, forced their repentance so much. That's why your children don't listen. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, that's what God has recorded. So it's me that's ruined my children. So, but if I shine, my children shine. If I do well, a thousand generations receive blessings. How is it? So if you have a look, the smallest thing and someone starts to pout and sulk, they don't think about rebuking, they sulk. They don't know how to give thanks. So to those whom he loves, if you love your child, you say, you need to fix this. You'll say, you need to fix that habit. Sometimes you'll hit their hands or beat them to fix it so that they'll, you, you'll hit them. So, so to those whom God loves, God gives problems. In the world, they, they'll say, oh, it's something unfortunate. But if your children have problems, you need to realize God loves you. Why? For you to shine. If I shine, my children shine. So whether it be diseases, everything will be fixed. They'll be, you, you become smarter. You'll fix your destiny. And that's why God rebukes and disciplines us. So if we want to shine, what is it that we have to do? We have to do four-step repentance. Because he says to repent, that's four-step repentance. You may say, okay, well, I'm going to repent. If you just do the laundry, if you do the wrong thing, if something's made of silk or wool, you'll ruin it. Um, Clothes that are made of hemp, you have to wash it in that way. You know, cotton, you have to wash it in that way. Um, wools you have to wash in that way if you just put them all together and just wash them in water you ruin it so what God has appointed as his mystery we have to do the mystery of God the mystery of Christ four step repentance so you have to do four step repentance to be repenting properly that's when you become someone who shines that's someone who receives God's love so after hearing rebuke you know you rebuke your child if your child says Mom, I'm going to fix this. But they say it. They say it, but they can't fix it. But if you do four-step repentance, because your conscience becomes revived, he will change their actions. It's when our actions have changed, that's when we're fixed. So if you receive God's love, those who love God, they receive blessings that have been prepared. Let's find 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. You say, well, I'm not doing well. It's not working for me. You rebuke that person. So a church's sermon, is it better to have a lot of rebuke or a little bit of rebuke? That's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All of this world is rebuke. But fake pastors, they don't rebuke. They're like, 
let's let's change God's rebuke to, so that it's pleasing to the ear. You know, if something's rusted and you can't use it, you know, if there's if there's you know all this, do you just rub that softly? Where there's a lot of rust, you need to get a grinder so that sparks are flying. You know, you see a lot of factories around here, and you you see all those sparks flying and all that screeching. Why? To tell us that we have to repent properly. But if you just if you just you know rub softly with a with a cotton wool, you're not going to rub any of that rust off. If there's a lot of rust, you go where they're welding. They don't they don't even grind. They start hammering it, and then that rust starts falling off. So if Pastor Park's sermon seems scary, that's when, when all that rust is being, is being um, cracked off. But people who don't know, they're like, oh, you know, that's too extreme. But that's why your destiny becomes worse. Your children have more difficulties, and you end up bringing harm to the country. And when, when you're old and you're about to die, you're asking for the country to pay for your medical expenses. You may not say it, but that's what your life is. You don't give benefit to others. Let's live properly. So why is it that rebuke is so profitable to me? Because it is God's love. Because it is God's love. Where is that? 1 Timothy 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. So if we receive this rebuke and discipline, what is it we have to do? We have to repent. How much do we have to repent? Zealously. That's God's commandment. That's when I fix my destiny. I shine. If I shine everywhere I go, I shine that bright light. What do you call someone like that? You call that person smart. You call that person someone who's raised up in a good family. A person who shines. Someone who resembles God, who is the Son of God. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, because God is light. So what is it to believe in Jesus? It's to shine, because Jesus is light. John chapter 8, verse 12, let's do well. So someone who's not doing well, if you look at them, they hate to hear rebuke, and after hearing rebuke, they won't come again. You see that someone who doesn't go where there's rebuke, they will be ruined. But when you're thankful for rebuke, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8, once you rebuke that person, you can see. Once you rebuke that person, someone who does well, straight away they give thanks. And already they're a kernel. They hang their head. But people who don't do well, you rebuke them. You know, when you when you thresh, you can see the difference between the true and the fakes. Matthew chapter 3, verse 12, in Jesus' hand, if you thresh, The true keep coming closer to the master, but the fakes, they fly off. So they're different. They're they're divided. So what kind of person am I? Are you thankful for rebuke? Demons, they don't like it. And that's where you can differentiate. So all this time, why is my disease not being fixed? Why does the poverty not leave me? Why is it that I can't receive happiness so that I can always smile? Why is it that I have a bad spouse relationship and I'm suffering? Why is it that my children, they're all off in different directions and doing strange things? It's because the parents have done that. The parents have betrayed Christ. Who is the heretic? If you deny Christ the Lord, that is heresy. Who is the Lord? The Lord is Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. When have you denied the Lord? When you don't do four-step repentance. That's why you're a heretic. How do you want to live? We have to live as a man who shines. Then, what will God give? He will give you these blessings that he's prepared because that's someone who who loves God. But you look at those people who don't repent. They always make excuses. Jude chapter 1 verse 16. Um, they're a beast that is perishing. Please don't make excuses. I Even now, even though I'm going to be cursed by my wife, I say exactly like a child. If I'm thinking, then already you're a fake. Thinking with your head, that's being a slave to demons. So the countries that use their head, that's why the Soviet Union was ruined. Why is it 
that after some time that country is ruined because they do things with their head. So why is it that Korea isn't ruined? Because God wants to use us as the eagles of the East. Let's wake up. Other than prayer, there is no other way. What, you say it's by weapons? Is that what Jehovah says? 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse, verse 47. It's all in Jehovah's hands. If he's going to destroy you, no matter how good your weapons, you'll be destroyed. So in Iraq, they have this King Nebuchadnezzar uh, citadel. Citadel. What happened when the the when the when he took the kings of the Israel and took, plucked out their eyes after being used as after being used as you know instruments of evil? What happened to them after God destroyed them? So. You know, it's Jehovah does it. You know, one of our presidents, he even died in his own bedroom. It's not by weapons, but Jehovah does it. So if you can't realize you're a beast that is perishing, it's to those whom he loves that God rebukes and and disciplines. Whatever, whatever, wherever that rebukes you and curses you and makes you upset, that's where you need to go seek out. And when you give thanks for that, that's when you receive the miraculous blessings. Is this amen? So, if your husband says something to you, be thankful. If your wife says something to you, be thankful. If your parents-in-law say something to you, be thankful. When do, when can you give thanks? When you do four-step repentance. That's when you receive these blessings. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. So God says, those sem sermons that are pleasing to the ear without rebuke, they're fake sermons that ruin your soul. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8, 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1. And so they deny the Lord. They're not repenting. That is heresy. So why have you suffered? Now, we realize how good it is to hear rebuke. At least we know with our heads now. So now let's change it to actions. Let's obey with our hearts. From today, let's obey. So who is it that scolds you or gets you in trouble? They truly love you. They love you on the behalf of God. So give thanks. Those people who go to fake churches where they hate hate to hear rebuke, you see if they do what happens to them. You see if they have the Lord. They don't even have the Lord. Without four step repentance, you can't meet the Lord. They don't even have the Lord, and yet they lie and say, Lord, Lord. It's so pathetic, isn't it? We can't be deceived by that. Now let's fix our destiny. Let's fix our children's destinies. Let's only pass blessings to our children. Let's pass this blessing of love. Let's all pray. All rebuke makes me shine. By four-step repentance, let's make ourselves shine. Truly, good Father, all this time we've hated to do the dishes, but even more than that, we've hated to hear rebuke. But now we see that rebuke is so good, it makes us shine. Please forgive us for not knowing. Every time we receive rebuke, may we only give thanks. And may we be able to show our appreciation to that person. All of God's word, word is rebuke. May we eat it as sweeter than honey. By forced out repentance, may we shine and to save our children and to make Korea shine and to bring light to the world. May we be eagles of the East. And may we pass this blessing to 10,000 generations. Now let's call upon, call upon the Lord three times. The rebuke that I've heard from others, being cursed by others, how you were saddened. Let's change it to thanksgiving. Let's call upon the Lord three times. Lord, Lord, Lord. Father, we've lived so wrongly. I hated this way. I hated that way. May we now repent of all of that and to change to light, to fix my destiny, to pass this blessing to my children and to be a patriot to my country.